Saturday Social is powered by EA Sports FIFA 23 with PlayStation. And speaking of uh, Ronaldo, a uh, huge game for his club, Man United against Chelsea. That's at Stamford Bridge tonight, live on Sky, Saturday Night Football. And Ronaldo won't be involved, as we discussed earlier on the show. Uh, but we can have a look at the league table because it's a huge game this. You can see just how tight uh, these two teams are uh, from the league table now. Chelsea currently in fourth, 20 points, but only a point behind them, Manchester United on 19 points. And of course, as we've got a Chelsea and a Man United guest in the studio and our Saturday social whiteboard uh, is in attendance as it usually is. We thought we'd get them to do a little combined 11. Yes. Uh, Joe, there's a bit of criteria this one. So yeah, and they always get quite spicy, don't they? So I am <laughs> looking Rory's forward on the to show, this one. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to try and build a combined 11 that could win the title this season, but we are going to allow players that are injured. So for instance, Rhys James, mm. who's had an outstanding season, outstanding year, has picked up that knock, hasn't he? And he's going to be out for a couple of months, but we will allow you. Phil to Jones is injured. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So you can include injured players, but we must come to an agreement on it. And if there is any sort of debate over the position, we're kind of bit based on the best argument. Won't okay. we, so they're building a team to compete for the title, the strongest exactly. 11. Right, exactly okay. that. Uh, and uh, we'll do it at a 4 3 3. Yes. Because obviously, there are four, three, two formations, three. but you're happy mm. to do 4 3 3. Uh, let's start with goalkeepers then. Kepa Ariza Balaga. Uh, Kepa Ariza Balaga's form since Graham Potter has come in has mm. been sensational. He's, remember, he had to win he back an the number one. He was an outcast. <laughs> he was he had, an outcast. He was an outcast, and I didn't think that he had it in him. I didn't think he had the minerals to be the player that he has become. Yeah. But he now he starts our attacks. I Plus genuinely the last eight games in all competitions, and also his performances against Brentford and Villa, superb, uh, unbelievable. I'm not convinced he'll ever concede a goal again. He is so <laughs> good. he is he <laughs> is so good. Clip he's, that he's, he's, yeah, well, no. look, clip that for half five. He's, <laughs> he's, the, he's, he's the form goalkeeper of the Premier League. He's the form goalkeeper of the Premier League. So to leave him out of a team would be insanity. Over to you, Flay. It's all cute. Um, all the stuff with Kepper, it's nice of him to uh, be a professional again. It's nice for him to get game time. It's nice for him to come to the party and play in the league. Um, but this guy's been ever-present. He's come through his wobble, which was about a year and a half ago. Um, and ever since Hang then... On, wasn't there a wobble against Brentford earlier this season? One. Yeah, but that, sorry, one. I, thought the, I thought the wobble was one. a year and a one. half ago. They're both not Spain's keepers at the moment, so that's fine. But in terms of the levels that David De Gea has reached, both in his career um, and even now, he's still as reliable as ever. He's still winning Manchester United points. Um, and for me, Kepa can't lace De Gea's boots That's in ridiculous. any department. Do you know what, do you know what David De Gea is? This is a player who even played for three years and now like, all of a sudden he's better than De Gea. David De Gea is like Hercules or Romulus and Remus. It's mythology. Like, he's got this aura and people talk about him, but it's all a bit of a myth, isn't it? It's bluster. He's not a particularly good goalkeeper. He occasionally pulls out a good save. His distribution is poxy. Kepa's been playing in the dog and duck. He ain't even been playing football. He's, he's only just basically become a professional. But, but playing for Manchester United isn't necessarily something to celebrate. Be, being, of course it is. He's got, he, over, he's got so, over 500 appearances. No, so he Manchester got, United legend. He, got, he was dropped from a team that won the Champions League. And then, has rediscovered, and then has rediscovered his place. David De Gea has been ever present. That's an American. David, just, who's he, he been keeping? He's just come the back team? to the forefront. When you say ever present, who's he keeping yeah. out of the team? We don't need to buy another keeper because we who, got him. So who's he keeping out? You the spent. He was. He was a world present. record signing, was he not, Kepa? He didn't play for two of years. Of course he's ever present because there's nobody to dispose him. Yeah, because he's that good. He's not that good. He's you got you, you got Kepa, then got Mendy, and then we need some and, then, and we talk about players not, refusing to come off the I pitch. Was, is, wow. Kepa, is Kepa good enough to play? He refused to even walk off the pitch in that Carabao Cup. That was poor. But so by Rory saying that, by Rory saying that, he should never, he should even have the chance for redemption. But now it's all right. So what are we doing here? Are we moving the goalposts or not? That is a genius response from Flex. Yeah, we can't decide. We have to have it because he disrespected Sorry. He should never even play for Chelsea. See again. He disrespected Sari. <laughs> At least within the sats machine, bro. So he was right about Sari, but, but you, shouldn't, you shouldn't disrespect the status of Chelsea manager. I will therefore fall on my sword. <laughs> oh, he's thrown him out. <laughs> accidental. <laughs> accidental. It's like David Hay on a building. Let's go to right back. Let's yeah, go to right back. So right back. Be an agreement. Uh, right back. We have no conversation. There you go. Sad news about Rhys James. The really form that he was on for, for, for club and country, the timing of that injury as well. Um, I know. It's sad news. Are you in agreement that? He's nailed on. He's phenomenal. Guys. He's phenomenal. Yeah. I know there's always the stuff about Trent and comparing him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I do always go over Rhys James. I think he's the most complete fullback, okay. arguably in world football. Nice. Let's move to centre backs then, because there's debate here. There's no debate with one. I refuse to debate one. I, I, I riot. I launch the us, table and leave. Thiago Silva. Got, Silva I refuse. I can't have a conversation about this. If anybody tries to provoke me on this, I will leave in a storm. This man is elite. Do you know this? Do you know how good this man is? I genuinely think that he is in the conversation for our greatest ever 11. That is how good oh, he is. Is he better if, than John Terry? If you, if you were to do it, it would be Terry and Silver. Imagine if Whoa. Chelsea had signed Silver when we should have done. 
Thiago over, over Carvalho? Potentially. Wow. It's a conversation. He is that good. He is sensational. The way that he has adopted the club, the way that his family seems so oh. invested in Chelsea. You know, his missus is always like teaching her children the Thiago Silva chant that we sing for him and all that. He is Mr. Chelsea. I adore the man. And he's in this team or I go mad. Um, the Rolls Royce. Oh, the that's so boring. Rafe, the Phantoms. The Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce. The Champions League Varan. The Rolls, the Rolls <laughs> Royce. The, the Rolls Royce. Um, and you know what? I think these two are actually very similar in terms of they've been there, they've done it. World Cup champion, multiple Champions League, La Liga's, decorated footballers, top, top, top. Because for me, Lissandro Martinez does have to go into this, which we'll get onto. But for me, out of these, he's my guy. I'm going to say, as no other reason, this is sheer Man United bias. Varane, for me, is my guy. And I think what he's actually bringing to Manchester United, people wrote him off last season saying he ain't this and he ain't that. He's too injury prone. Eric Ten Hag has come in, got him on his own regime. And now we are starting to see the best of Rafael I've got a real problem here. So are you trying to tell me, because you've brought Martinez into this conversation, are you trying to tell me that the centre-half partnership absolutely. is Varane Manch- Martinez? Absolutely. And you're leaving Thiago Silva out? Absolutely. OK, I can't. I, he needs protecting it. His legs are gone. He can't, he's barely I'm playing well. well. He's only is... just playing well now in a, in a, in a back four. He needs to protect him for two years. He is sensational. He has been unplayable. He has been, he's a very good player. He has been our player. Like, as I say, he is in the conversation for Chelsea's best ever centre-half. We went with De Gea in goal over Kevin. Well, you ain't had many. That so ain't happened. So we go Thiago Silva and we say Lissandro Martinez and Silva as a pair. I, I know live, I'm going to lose this. That. So I'm happy with, happy that. with that. On this guy, can I just say, Lissandro Martinez, I think people who have tried to doubt him and criticise him, hang your heads in shame. Because all he's done since he's come into the Premier League is prove people wrong. He's too small. He'll never work. He's proven it game in, game out. Fantastic. OK, let's go on to the left back. Bit of an England debate with this one as well. Luke Shaw and Ben Chilwell. So, i to know which way you've gone, both of you. I mean, whatever angle we put on this, it's a Chelsea player. Like, if it's, it, the answer is Chilwell for me. It's definitely Ben Chilwell. I think he is, I think he is Chelsea's best left back. I mean, Cucurella is an option yeah, for Chelsea. Yeah, of course. But, but Ben Chilwell is, is far superior. I think he's great for a goal. He's great going forward. He offers so much to the team. And a lot of the good things that Chelsea do come from having excellent fullbacks. Mm. If Reese James and Ben Chilwell play well, Chelsea invariably win the game. So I think Ben Chilwell over Luke Shaw every day of the week and twice on a Sunday. Um, I agree. I do agree. I, ooh, I, think, I, ooh, I do agree. Okay. I think with, with how I want my team to be able to play, I think having an attacking fullback who really um, contributes to the game with assists and contributes to the game uh, with goals as well and just facilitating attack and play, I think he does have that over Shaw. Um, I am comfortable with Shaw when he's at his best level, which is a problem, is how often is he at his best level? I'm comfortable with Shaw defensively. I'm comfortable with Shaw on the ball. Um, he can be a steady Eddie. He can be a steady head, but I just don't see that consistency for him. And going forward, I think that he pips it. Who do you think is going to start for England out of those two? Luke Shaw, though, Will. <laughs> I think I because think Gareth Southgate has his, pe- has his players that... Right. Are almost untouchable and are almost that. Yeah. It's painful. That's to it. That. It is that. You know what I mean? Ben, ben Chilwell is twice a player of Shaw, but Southgate will pick. You both agree. And, 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 and I won't even be against that. I won't even be against that. We've currently got three Chelsea, we're always just talking about two Man United. Should we want to go to the midfielders then? Because this, again, hotly debated area. Is there any that you definitely agree on? I mean, surely it's N'Golo Kante. Surely we don't need to explore this. N'Golo Kante is obviously in a. Here's the thing, Rory. I actually did have Kante in my original 11, because I think he's getting disrespected because he's going through the injuries now and he's not the same Kante. When he's fit, he can still come into any midfield right now and be the best player on the pitch and run a game. Since his his Premier League debut, which is back in 2015, most successful tackles, interceptions and possession one, that's since his debut. So he's been been an unbelievable player. The injuries are becoming The injuries have become... And of course, his contract situation as well. What do you Mm -hmm. make of all of that? Yeah, I mean, Chelsea need to make sure that we we sign him up for the long haul. I think he's... Would you you still keep... Even with the injuries, you just still believe in him? I I think that N'Golo Kante is one of a few genuinely world-class players that Chelsea have. Chelsea aren't littered with actually world-class players. We have a brilliant team, brilliant squad. But in terms of being genuinely, there is no argument in terms of uh, describing him as world-class. He is one of our very few world-class players and therefore makes Let's get him on the board easily. then, if you both, both agree with that. Yeah, so, I, I went with Kovacic. I, I actually went with Kovacic over Kante because I've got this guy. Kas- I won't put him up there yet because I don't know if okay. we're going to get that. But Casemiro, you're talking about genuine world-class. You're talking about big game play. You're talking about been there, done it all um, and fantastic in his position and one of the world's best in his position and trying to build and construct a team between both sets of players to make the most balanced team. Mm. I 
I actually did go Casemiro and Kovacic just because I thought the injuries were creeping in. But I feel like Kante's going to get in, so I'm going to go, so you're gonna go Casemiro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't just put it up. Who are the, two, the other two you've got There's then. a system here. <laughs> uh, Mateo Kovacic needs to be in in terms of, in terms of what he does. Brilliant. Nobody else can do in terms of the way that he carries the ball, the way that he gains, gains you 20 yards. Every time he gets the ball, you're seeing gain 20 yards. He is definitely in a combined 11. I think if we're being completely honest and bipartisan, there is no Manchester United player in the Chelsea Manchester United combined eleven midfield. There is. Like, let's be completely honest. Have there is, and he's very important right now. So this he's, he's proved it. No, there. You put him on the board, but that no. Okay, even, him, even if you take him off and I'm making the, the case, board. they've both been at Real Madrid. He's 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 left Real Madrid and gone on to Chelsea, right? Don't, I, I think he's a fantastic player. When? Not, yeah, not, if we were not, if we yeah. were having this conversation in 2017, no, but, maybe, but Cas- maybe Casem- right. Casemiro has stayed at the absolute top level of club football all the way through and is still proven up until this year is the man of the match in the Super Cup he is still a world class player and I would argue that he's actually still the best in his position in the world There's, that's that's not true he's had he's had one good game for Manchester United no, he's been buying his time since he's come to Manchester United but as a player right now but in terms he's still of the midfield the midfield the midfield three if we're being completely fair is N'Golo Kante, Mateo Kovacic and Mason Mount. No. That, is the, that is the midfield. Bruno <laughs> Fernandes. Bruno, he hasn't even spoke about Bruno Fernandes. I know you're going to try and discredit Bruno Fernandes. Discredit? Yeah, because yeah, I, I know what you're like. I have to use words that you would use. Um, <laughs> you're trying to discredit Bruno Fernandes and act like he's just a nothing player. Again, trying to create the best 11 with this. If you've got the security of either Kante, Kovacic or Casemiro mm. and you're now looking for X Factor to unlock a front three, Bruno possesses that. Has he gone through a little bit of a tough period yes he has but look against Tottenham proved exactly why he plays and the ground that he covers and what he can con- con- contribute to a team so Bruno Fernandes for me it'll be Bruno Fernandes and Casemiro here Absolutely. Well, we've, got, we've got to come to an agreement here so what, what are you happy with you you're happy with Kovacic are you, are you happy with it's, it's, Mount is not not in this team Obviously, if Kovacic is in Bruno's in going in then it's not Mount going to be an Mount all three in. no chance well, should, can we agree on one United and one Chelsea then okay well Mason Mount is in which means it's Mount got, or Fernandes so it's Mount and then Kovacic Casemiro you're picking one Man United player. You have to pick one Man United player, Rory. There's your two Mount, Mount is in, so Casemiro. Mount and Casemiro. Mount, okay. Mount and Casemiro. It happy feels, it feels wrong for so me. I'm not, I wouldn't say oh, happy, okay. Smithy. I will begrudgingly accept. Yeah. I'm not happy because Bruno Fernandes must be in this team. Wow. Well, no, no one's the, mentioned In the front line, either. then. In the, and Ericsson. Yeah. Mm. Number one. In, in the front line, we've got two agreements off the back, have we? Raheem Sterling. Yeah, Raheem oh, yeah. Sterling is, is non-negotiable, right? Yeah, yeah. Raheem, non-negotiable. Raheem Sterling is... tidy up is, the midfield a bit. It's very narrow, that. <laughs> 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 We're awful matches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, go on. So We're Sterling... trying to create space for our yeah. fullbacks. Just, yeah. Just to confirm, you both agree with Sterling? Yes. Anything yes. that you agree on, let's put them straight on the board. I think we need to move Mount a bit further forward as well. I think we'll that sitting end. role, he may yeah, be questionable. Are. All right, we'll tuck these in. We and and yeah. Aubameyang leading the line. Yes. Aubameyang agree with that as well? I do agree with that, yeah, in this team. Okay, yeah. So one position available. Uh, Just give us the options that you've got in front of you, Chelsea and United, so we can... Uh, I was torn because I knew Rory wouldn't have a dog in this fight, and he doesn't. (laughs) Um, I think Chelsea on the right wing um, are almost non-existent. I think, um, obviously, Werner's gone. If Havertz has to play out there, if Pulisic has to play out there, Ziyech has to play out there, they all flatter to deceive. The two guys are... Even Anthony's only been here for, what, six or seven games? Could you move him out out there? He's played right wing and then put Bruno in the hole. You... Could potentially you could potentially do that, but I, I'm a big fan of Bounce Mount playing well. centrally, and Bounce. I don't like playing people out of position particularly. And they and do you know what? I like the look of Anthony. Yeah, I like that. I like what he brings to a team. I do like I like the trickery. I like the arrogance. You know, people are very sneery about players like that. Mm. I'm not. I embrace that. I think it's fantastic for mm. the game. So I'm, I'd be inclined to fall on my sword here and have Anthony. Yes, in. I was. I, it, it was a it was a difficult decision. I think Marcus Rashford is returning to somewhat mm. of the Marcus Rashford we've known. Eric Tung has done a good job, but on the right hand side, don't fancy Rashford at all. So I'm going to go agreeing on Anthony. Anthony. It, interestingly, neither of you mentioned Cristiano Ronaldo at any point during this combined eleven. No. Flex. No, I think um, with everything been going on. Um, and not just because of what he's done. I just think you look at, again, the fluidity and, and, and the way that this team would play and, and the movement that it would have. With, with, look at that as a front three. Um, I think Aubameyang's proved as well that he's, that he's capable now as well as getting chances as well. And, and for me, it's personal. If I'm the manager, I don't want Cristiano Ronaldo anywhere near me. He's going to disrupt my system. He's going to upset my players. He's going to undermine me at every opportunity and I don't want him anywhere near my team. All right, let's choose managers then. Let's choose a manager. Graham I Potter thought I was Eric Ten Hag. Out of us two? Yeah, Graham Potter. Eric Ten Hag. I feel like this is a, this is a this is a good tough. question. This is good. This yeah. is a good question. I think actually everything combined. Where is my manager? I don't I'm, a, I'm a big fan oh. of Ten Hag. I, I am. I think he's getting it right. I think he's doing a lot of good things for Manchester United, and I do feel like the they are finally on the right path. 
Like, you know, when, they've been, uh, when they appointed Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, there was a lot of jeopardy. When they appointed Ralph Rangnick, it was comical. This isn't that. This is the real deal, I think. So I do totally understand that Manchester United have the right man in charge and I rate what he's doing. Mm. But I just think for longevity, I think, I think that Potter's, Potter's been doing very impressive things okay. in the Premier League for longer. So I, my vote would be Graham But Potter. has Eric Ten Hag not done I was just impressive about to say things that. in Europe? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say his, his pedigree as a manager, as a, as a whole holistic manager, is higher than Graham Potter's. He's won... Um, in Eredivisie, he's, that, that he's, don't he's impress won. me, Mike. Yeah, I know you. Say, I know you say you say what well, you say Eredivisie, but then <laughs> you can say. Then, but you're saying that a manager who's won at Ostersons then um, he's done well there and 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 and, what, and did well at Brighton to build them but, is now better than a man who's done it in Champions League do, so do far. Got to push you for name. Okay, it's, 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 Eric Ten Hag. it's an interesting point. <laughs> is is winning is winning with Ostersons at, at Arsenal more impressive than what taking Ajax to a to a semi final? Rory's put him on the board. It's a four seven split. So. Oh, put it to the viewers. Put it to the viewers. Yeah, okay, we'll put it to the viewers. Yeah. Put it to the viewers. To the what viewers. do you think? That is confirmation of their combined 11. The one they couldn't agree on uh, was the manager. So what do you think? Let us know.